Good morning, everybody, and we are live on this very, very chilly Tuesday morning. Um, right, I'm just making sure that we're going live. Honest, great, I can see us. Fabulous. Feel free to chuck comments in the uh, comments box below. And of course, if we can, we'll get round to answering them. Really, really excited about today's live. It's going to be brilliant. I'm Holly Power, co-founder of Salonology. Um, and I'm hosting here for my friends at Timely. We've got a very, very exciting live training video for you this morning uh, because I'm here with the fabulous Sarah Garner from Digital Bloom over in sunny Australia, who's sitting there in humid weather, enjoying the heat at the moment while we all sit here and freeze in two degrees. Welcome and good morning or good evening to you, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's absolutely amazing to be on and how cool is that we can connect from the other side of the world. It's oh. insane. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. And it's such a um, it's such a unique thing that we can do now. And after all the rubbishness of this year, the fact that we can still uh, be out there in front of everybody and chatting in such an easy, easy way is just fabulous, isn't it? Now, um, I just want to tell everybody a little bit about you, Sarah, and a little bit about what you do. Um, so first of all, uh, Sarah is the founder of Digital Bloom, and Digital Bloom works exclusively within the hair, wellness, and beauty industry to help consistent branding, to have a consistent message out to your community, um, to, um, well, how you put it yourself is transparency, com commitment, and respect being at the heart of what they do. So they're very, very much about working with people in our industry. Uh, Sarah knows the industry very well herself to help us to, um, to get better branding, more consistent branding, because branding is so key to our clients recognizing us, getting to know us. Um, and we're very, very honored to have her here today, all the way from Australia. So thank you very, very much for joining us. Now, Sarah is the co-founder and the creative director of Digital Bloom. Um, and she's gonna share some three top tips on mastering Canva with us. Now she's been working within the industry since 2015. So she's got tons of experience um, and she believes that such an industry that is so dedicated to looking after people and keeping everybody's mental health well and keeping people healthy and feeling good, that their business can help support our industry uh, to move forward and grow via online presence and branding and print work and all sorts of things that help us connect with our clients um, in all sorts of different manners. So massive, massive welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. I've been super, super looking forward to this live call, I have to say, because Canva is somewhat of a, uh, a well, a, a fabulous piece of kit, isn't it? But it can be a little bit challenging sometimes. Yeah, definitely. It is such a blessing and such a curse. And this is what I've been finding along the way, but more so this year um, in the, you know, the storm that is 2020. Yes. People are obviously having more downtime, wanting to yeah. work on their brand, um, not necessarily having the budget, but having more so the time and discovering Canva and just completely mind blown with what they can do on it. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, incredible. absolutely. And if, if anybody's watching is not familiar with the Canva, um, the brand, uh, it's essentially like an online graphic design piece of software that you can access for free or you can pay for a pro version. Um, and it will basically allow you to create social media tiles, posters, price lists, leaflets. They have tons of templates. They have um, images that you can use. They have like cool little graphics and stuff that you can put in place. You can color match, you can upload your logos and imagery and all sorts of different things. And, and Canva's been around for some time. And I know that we do use it quite a lot in our industry in the UK. It is a big piece of software that's used here. Um, but what I find is some people either sort of click with it initially or they go, this is, I just, I'm finding this really, really frustrating. And they just, they just turn off and they don't use it again. But obviously mm. there are some little tricks and hacks on that that you can use to make it a really, really effective piece of equipment. Because of course, um, 
as we all know, it's no secret that branding is very, very key to growing a business, particularly in the industry that we're in. And when you're continuously putting content out to your, your, um, your viewers, your fans, your followers, they will start to recognize your key branding, won't they? And that's why it's so important to create consistency. So Sarah has very, very kindly offered to share some of her top tips with us today. Uh, I have a couple of questions as well that I will chuck in the mix if we get an opportunity, but I know she's got loads to share. And of course, please um, pop anything in the comments and if we get a chance to, to put those questions to Sarah as well, then we absolutely will. So I'm gonna hand over to you now, Sarah, because you're the expert. I am far from a Canva expert. I must admit, I am still trying to get my head around it myself. So I'm sure that I'm gonna learn plenty from you today as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, I think I would, I'm just going to dive in because you've already covered off on Digital Bloom and what we do and what our mission is. So um, this, these three top tips are all around creating consistency within your branding because at the end of the day, especially when it comes to social media, in, in 2020, going to 2021, we are flooded with millions upon millions of different bits of information at any one second. Um, that is, you know, as a business owner, we're putting that out or as a brand and as a consumer, it's even worse. So if you sit there and you think, you know, how, how often do you actually scroll on say Facebook or you Google something or your Instagram or, or whatever platform of choice that you have, um, there's no doubt there's sell, there's value, there's a cute little puppy, like it's just completely flooded. So yeah. the question we often get asked is how do we get seen? How do we get seen by our dream clients? And there's a number of different factors that go into that, of course. Understanding who your dream clients are a very big one and um, understanding how to position your brand and your messaging for that. The second part of that is what I like to, what we call is getting them to turn heads for all the right reasons. So mm -hmm. how often would you scroll on a feed and you go, oh, wow, that's pretty, that's caught my eye, I'm going to click on it. It's a subconscious thing. Visuals are processed 10,000 times faster than they are words. It's just at, it's at a subconscious level as a consumer, as a human, we're drawn to naturally pretty things, I suppose, or, yeah. or eye-catching things. Particularly in our industry, which yeah. is so full of pretty things. Absolutely. And it's all good and well to say we don't judge a book by its cover, but it is human nature. We instantly do. So um, I guess it, it really starts with honing in on the colour. And the, the vital role it plays within your branding. And a lot of people that we work with seem to think that they don't like X, Y, and Z color. So therefore, they're not going to have it as part of their brand. But little do they know, once they really drill down on who their dream clients are, and that's the people that come into your space 10 minutes early for their appointment, they spend you know, they, they buy whatever you want them to buy, whatever you recommend. They re, they're just a really great client. Yeah. So understanding what makes them tick and then pairing that with the colors and the color psyche. So again, going into psychology, color actually triggers us as humans to take action in different ways. And it also right. provokes different emotions within us. So if you think about, if you've ever walked into say a white room in a mm -hmm. house, you instantly feel light and you feel like it's a very big open space and it's very light filled and you instantly feel joy, generally speaking. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the energy of colour. So yes. if you were to walk into, say, a black room, no yeah. doubt you would have probably the opposite effect or you would feel a little bit heavy, a little bit closed yeah. in, yeah. not so much free feeling. So when it comes to colour and our brand, we need to, one, be consistent, right? So it's like... Uh, for instance, we'll, we'll talk about Timely. They have a very consistent color palette. And no yes. doubt you look on any particular social media channel all the way through to their website and their printed marketing, their brand activations, everything, every single touch point has very consistent colors. And yes. very, very rarely do they go off color. Mm -hmm. So a way to do this through Canva and um, if you aren't sort of at the point where you're ready to invest in say a brand revamp or engaging a designer or a branding team to do this for you, Canva has an incredible tool to do this. And I just, when I discovered it, I thought, oh my goodness, I need to tell the world about it. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely free. And let's say you're on Pinterest or you're on Google and you, or even Instagram, and you see um, some colors that you like within an image. 
Canva actually allows you to grab that image and upload it and it extracts the colors from that image for you. Ah, yes, yeah. I have seen yes. this now where you then go through to the neck, the color palette, don't you? And it pulls. Yes, yes mm. it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. It's incredible. And the amount of times that people have asked me, Sarah, I love this color, but I cannot for the life of me ever try and find a match to it. So Canva has built this for us and I'm pretty sure unless they've changed it, you don't actually need an account to use this particular tool. It's, it's called the Canva color generator. Right. It's incredible. So if you're thinking about um, if you don't have some solid colors in place, I highly recommend you start having a look at what's out there um, and making sure that not only you like it, but potentially also surveying some of your top clients and seeing what colors they resonate with as well. Um, at yeah. a base level and then being able to use those color codes through Canva mm -hmm. this is a really quick way to get those codes if that makes sense because all colors yeah. have codes yes yes of course, yeah. yeah yeah um can I just pull out something you're saying this Sarah because it's really interesting um what you and I just want to kind of um I just want to kind of back up what you're saying about the importance of branding your business to something yes that reflects you and your personality but it's also going to connect with your client base yes. and I think we um all may be a little bit guilty of just thinking well I really like pink so I'm going to make everything pink and that is fine but there's certain clients who are going to get turned off by that and if you're you're trying to appeal to a very very high-end market for instance the sort of brands they're going to be following and, and looking at and you know they're looking at the high-end markets, the, the high-end watches, the high-end cars, mm -hmm. the high-end clothing brands, they're using a different color palette probably to pink, aren't they? Because yes. it's connecting at a different level. And I think first and foremost, when anybody's in business, particularly in our industry, you've so got to uh, nail down who your dream client is, because that will impact how you brand, how you market, how you move yourself forward, how you communicate, how you post, everything needs to be so you and them align. And that's yes. going to start really with, with your colors because that forms really the basis of who you are and that message yes. you're putting out there. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. And it's a, it's, it's a vital part of the brand. I mean, we're all in business because we can help people or we have a, we have a solve to these problems. And we really encourage, especially Digital Bloom, um, when we're making decisions in our brand, they're all centrally focused around your customers and your ideal clients. It's, mm. it's vital. It's so important because at the end of the day, they're the ones that uh, bring the revenue into your business. They're the ones you, you know, who fill your cup when you, when you service them. So why would we not cater to them from our brand perspective? And I think it's a very fine line between um, balancing these colors around what, what is going to emotionally trigger them, but also you've got to love it too, because if you love your brand, subconsciously again it's going to pretty much ooze out of your face like sunshine like you're going to speak about it to everybody in the most positive light you're going to shout it from the rooftops so it's really important that you are happy with something as simple as your colors people often yeah. overlook them something as simple as your colors and your fonts because even though at a surface level um, they're just colors and fonts they go so much deeper than that so really understanding and I think starting with the colors once you've understood who your dream clients are is a really um, really good way to start that and um, get those codes out through Canva so the codes we're talking about are hex codes for anybody that doesn't know um, that you can apply and you get the same color on you know Can the Canva platform. It's a series of numbers isn't it essentially yes. that, that um, is yeah like it's a code that is relevant to that particular exact shade of color. Correct. So that across all of your marketing or if you had designers you could pass that to them and they would make yes. sure it's the same color um and it, it allows you to make sure everything is exactly the same tone rather than using a generic pink or a generic brown for instance yes. you can then make sure it all matches perfectly because that's how you get the perfect branding yes consistency is key <laughs> absolutely um and so we'll, we'll move on into fonts because this is another really cool tool that i've i've discovered when I discovered the color um, generator tool. I think they brought it out this year, but don't quote me on that. It might've been around before I discovered it. Being a graphic designer, I naturally just do these things, you know, on my design software. So 
when all of this came up, when COVID came about, the big C word, I don't really like to use it, so negative. Um, but, you know, people were asking me for Canva training and I thought, well, there's a lot of graphic designers out there that are like, no, Canva's taking my job, I, I can't deal with it, blah, blah, blah. But how do we help everybody, right? We can only help so many people in a day. So this is where I started to understand, you know, more about Canva and how, you know, how people can actually build their brand on it branding on it rather to get to a point where they've grown their business and now they're ready to you know put the put the foot on the pedal and engage or outsource um the second component to that i've gone off a little bit sidetracked there um is fonts so understanding again fonts do um attack us attack us trigger us at an emotional level subconsciously just like color so um, if we look at, for instance, um, something like Vogue, the, everyone's pretty familiar with the Vogue magazine, the logo up the top, um, that is what we call a serif font. So a serif font is a font where it um, has the little like tails at the ends of all the letters or the little okay. lines. Um, traditionally speaking, it, it is an elegant font. It, it, it um, comes across as exclusives. So that's why you will see it in, in something like Vogue. Um, it comes across as that like really polished and elegant, you know, mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. When we look at um, fonts that don't have those tails, they're generally called sans serif fonts, which is kind of crazy because they both say serif, but <laughs> sans serif fonts. <laughs> I just, so sans means without, doesn't it? So yes, I, yes. do you know what? I never knew that. I never knew that. I never knew that until I understood what a sans serif was. I'm like, oh, they don't have the tails. It makes sense. <laughs> so sans serif fonts trigger different emotions just like different colours do. Right. So if you start having a look at, um, even if you wanted to do like a mini branding order as you're watching this video and going, okay, well, my colours I like, but maybe I should check in with my, you know, A-grade clients. Um what do my fonts look like? Well, I wanted to come across elegant, but I might not necessarily have that serif font. So how can I change that to change the feeling that my branding is putting out? Mm -hmm. People often um, ask me what fonts go together. So you've got serif with the tails, sans serif without the tails, then you've got a script font. So fun, um, it can be elegant, can be whimsical. It depends on basically the font. Um, but Canva have this incredible feature to help you um, pair fonts, which is really cool. Ah, okay. yeah, really cool. I did not know this. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I highly recommend having no more, absolutely no more than four fonts as a maximum, because otherwise, if we're not consistent with our fonts, again, we're going to lose that brand recognition. So, for instance, you wouldn't see the likes of Vogue using um, a font that's all, I don't know, a graffiti kind of font you know, for their brand. They're really, really consistent throughout. So Canva, basically, you can jump on. Um, it's another free, like a generator kind of tool. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called the font font pairing or font generator. Don't quote me on that, but I will get that for you. Um, that will actually pair two fonts together. So it might be that you select your first font as a serif font. It's going to pair it with a font that sits nicely um, aesthetically and also okay. psychologically. So really cool. Is this a is feature on the free option or do you have to be pro for this? No, these are all free features. These, sorry, these two are free features. And then the third one is a pro feature, um, which will help you bring this, these elements together and it's going to help you create that ultimate consistency. So when we, you know, as I've mentioned before, when we use a font or a color that's outside um, consistently outside of our own branding, um, people start to forget who we are. They're not really sure if it's our work. They're not sure if it's our business. So that's why I always drill down. Consistency is absolutely key. Um, you know, Cadbury for instance, or Coca-Cola, generally don't use colors or fonts outside of their set so if we start we looking know Cadbury's colors we all know yes. uh, coca-cola's colors in fact most people know that coca-cola used to be green uh yes. sorry father christmas used to be green until coca-cola made him red to match yes. their branding you know it's craziness and we all recognize that red and white it's yes. just distinctive internationally isn't it and that's yes. because they've used a consistent colorway Correct. 
and they've stayed they've they've remained true to um, a lot of different things but we're talking about the aesthetics they've remained true um, to those guidelines uh, that that were set by the original brand strategist um, yeah. for instance just to give you like an example at a not so much a top end, I suppose, um, branding perspective, but just how powerful consistent branding can be. Mm -hmm. For instance, Digital Bloom, um, we use sunflowers and play on that bloom and flower and analogy. Yeah. And so literally daily, like it's bananas how daily this is, people will send me sunflower photos, just photos of a flower. And they'll say, I thought of you when I saw this. Now it has no logo. <laughs> No words, no nothing. It just has my colour and my analogy to a sunflower. So that's really how powerful branding consistently done can be. And I think that once everyone gets into good good habits and, and, to good, and good practice with that, it's just, it's absolutely mind-blowing. People will see something and then think of you and go, I need to book in an appointment or mm -hmm. I need to get this retail from you. Um, which is just wild. It, like, I love it it's so much. <laughs> it's such a powerful, all-encompassing uh, tool, isn't it, to use? And, and just, I think it's something that's so overlooked because sometimes people yes. just think, oh, I need a logo. Oh, I just need a colour. I'm going to be purple. I'll yes. just be purple because it's a bit beauty-based. And, and then that's kind of the foundations of it. And once you sort of go through the process you've had a website built you've got stuff on your Facebook page you're kind of then invested almost in that branding yes. and it is I mean we at Salonology we did a huge rebrand last year we had two previous company names we changed the colors we changed the brand name we changed everything about us because we weren't comfortable with our brand anymore we wanted something new and fresh to actually give a better image and it has subsequently reflected in how the business has grown and it, it shows when you I didn't like the name of the businesses before so I was always a bit like oh it's called this whereas now I'm like very very proud of the brand so it's all about being proud of it as well isn't it but I just wanted to touch on something you actually put on your website as well where you said about um you know you'd be mortified if you turned up at an event in the same dress as somebody else you don't want to be branded yes if it's like somebody else and whilst uh that's a brilliant tool in Canva to bring those images in to pull out colors and ideas um it's about inspiration isn't it as Correct. opposed to you know oh they i like what they do i'm going to do the same thing yes. you want to pull the inspiration from those ideas in order to give you your own branding your own platform you don't want to just be copying people and i do see it sometimes in um you know you see a brand and you think well, that looks so so like that other brand and you you almost realize straight away they're just kind of riding off the coattails of mm. someone else branding mm -hmm. is such a personal thing and yes. it's so important to be authentically yourself um, in every element of your business but branding is obviously that message you're putting out all the time yes. and we worked out recently that something like if your client was going to visit you for one hour per month then not point not not one three percent of their time is spent with you and the rest of the time is not spent with you the only communication they see is what you're putting out on socials or what you're printing what's coming through the letterbox what's yes. coming on their phone so if that can be consistently strong in alignment with their brand then you've got much more chance of building a bond with them whilst you're not physically seeing them yes absolutely and your branding is like the clothes that you wear so if absolutely. your business was a human um, your branding, the, the visuals, that they're the clothes you choose to put on that represent yourself to the world. Yeah. So it's like, would you walk out of your house in a potato sack? Probably not. <laughs> you would look your best because yeah, people absolutely. are judging you whether they like yeah. it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And people yes. will make a connection with you. Um, we were out doing our Christmas shopping yesterday and there was a lady behind us. We were at the Chanel counter getting some perfume and there was a lady behind us and she was chanel in every level. She had a Chanel handbag, she had a brooch, she had a scarf and you could tell she, she was real Chanel and she wasn't wearing fake. And you, straight away, you, could, you know exactly what kind of person she is because of how she's presenting herself with a very, she's aligning herself with a high-end brand. And that's what people do. 
don't they? They want to align themselves with brands that they connect with. And they'll, she's obviously spent a lot of money with Chanel over the years. So, um, you know, if, if, if that was, you know, a tacky looking brand, I doubt she'd have spent that sort of money with them. She, she wants to show that she mm. loves that brand and she's committed to it. And she's prepared yes. to spend thousands of, of pounds to adorn herself with their relevant things. So that's what we want to be doing. Don't we want to create a brand that people connect with and align with and, and, and want to be part of? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's a really interesting point that you bring that up because I think the industries that we, we are in and we work with have, and I think we were saying this the other day when we were chatting, have such an innate ability to empower and inspire confidence in all of their clients. Like guaranteed your clients feel 110% crazy amazing when they're in your space. Mm -hmm. But when you take them out of your space, you want them to still feel 110% crazy amazing interacting with your brand. So it's it's the exact same thing that you do in, in the space, but just in a visual format yeah. and on, you know, with tying into marketing and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bonds build businesses, don't they? 100%. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, absolutely. Um, there's uh, loads of comments coming through here. Uh, loads of people are watching with us. So thank you, everybody, for coming in and hanging hanging out. Um, Christine asks, I'd love to know the best fonts to use for our socials and website. I'm using Pro Canva at the moment. Um, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it, for you to suggest the best, <laughs> the best <laughs> ones. But um, is there a way that people can reach out to you to work with you more closely, Sarah? Or how could people make uh, make contact? Because you are so industry specific, of course, that's very exciting to a lot of the audience today. So, so tell us, is, is there a way you can help people? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd be more than happy to jump on. We could do um, a live or if you wanted some personal one-on-one -on -one help, you're always welcome to jump on our website. There is a contact form um, that comes through to me and then we can arrange a time to chat. Um, one thing that I do like being able to tell you your fonts off the top of my head without knowing where you're going, um, your vision for your brand, who your dream clients are is quite a tricky one um, yeah. because we will never ever recommend anything to you unless it's absolutely um, authentically aligned to your vision and what you're creating and those clients. So sorry to not be able to answer that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely jump on our website and hit that contact form. Um, and we can arrange a time to, to chat about it more in depth for sure. Yeah, well, Christine's actually, I know Christine. So um, Christine, reach out to Sarah if you want any help with that. She's she's fab. A couple more questions. I'm just going to chuck at you if that's all right from our yeah. community as well. Um, how to best search for images? This is a question from one of our clients. She said, I find myself scrolling for ages. Is there a quick fix to find what you're looking for on Canva? Mm, yes and no. Um, so in the Canva platform, you can click on uh, the, the image um, section on the toolbar on the left. And then there's a search bar up the top that you can type in um, therapist, beauty, um, hair, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a number of really great free stock websites that what I like to call a non-stocky photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. They're stock photos. So yep. you can't actually tell that they're those ones that do this. <laughs> they're actually yep. real, real people doing real things in the yep. moment. Um, so I would highly recommend jumping on there because if you think about it, everybody that is on Canva generally has access to all of those images and you might see them pop up left, right and center. Um, they do have some partnerships, I know, um, through Canva with some of these stock websites, which is great because, you know, there's such a big library. Um, but somewhere like uh, unsplash.com is a fantastic, and these are all not plugged, by the way. Yeah. Yep. Um, Pexels.com is fantastic. Uh, um, what else have we got? You can go, of course, and pay for imagery um, if you yep. want to, but there are such a number of different free ones that you can use. The only thing to be mindful with that is just make sure that um, if you are going to do any kind of merchandise or use those images in a way that's going to actually make you money, not so much a, a marketing sense, but sellable product to make sure you actually contact the owner of that photograph and purchase the commercial license. Yeah, they have all their contact details on the website, don't they? So it's super easy for you to reach out. And I think it's also nice to credit them as well, isn't it? If they yes. are providing free imagery. Uh, Pixabay is another one as well. Pixabay, I don't know if yep. you 
that, but we, mm -hmm. we've used that occasionally. But Unsplash is my favourite. There's some fabulous, fabulous imagery on there. Um, but also, um, I don't know if you would agree with this, Sarah, but we always say the best images you can use are actual real life images of your business yes. as much as possible. Yes. Because, you know, anybody can put a picture of somebody having a massage. Um, but if you we can actually see pictures of your treatment rooms or your styling chairs or, um, you know, your products, that actually just helps people connect even closer with you. Um, mm. you know, imagine if you were booking a hotel and you went on, you were deciding if you wanted to stay there and images were just stock images off a website. Yes. Of rooms. You don't want to see that. You want to know what the rooms look like because that conveys the feeling if you want to stay there or not, doesn't it? So yes. um, always try to use your own images and phones now for oh. nothing high res and, you know, big posters aren't going to work with a phone image. But if you take a photo with your phone, for something on Canva to do some tasks for your social media. Would you say that was acceptable? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Um, even we've had an example where, and I shouldn't giggle because it's not good. Um, but someone, a client, a client of ours way back when had um, been putting like photos off of Pinterest, not crediting them, which is a naughty, naughty right. thing to do, but they didn't yeah. know, right. They just, they, yeah. they didn't know this. So they were putting that up on their website, on their Instagram, on their Facebook. And they were like, um, why are the clients that are coming in so disappointed when they come in? And I, it took me a little while to figure this out. And I'm like, hang on a minute, I've seen this somewhere before. <laughs> and I started right. Googling and doing some, some research. And I said, can you send me some photos of inside your salon? And they did. And I said, well, that's the problem because you're portraying that they're chandeliers and there's these beautiful archways and it's the most prestigious Vogue looking salon. And it's not. <laughs> so yes. it is really important. Like if you can take your own photos, any day of the week, I would highly recommend that. We also have full rights of your own photos as Correct. well, don't you? And, you and I have seen uh, the situation where people have Googled something and they've taken a picture straight off Google and they've posted it on their website and there are there is technology that scans the internet yes. for these images. And if you don't have the license, you will get fined. If it's a Getty image and you don't have the license to use it, you can be fined something like £1,800, £2,000. And it yes. is a you've got to pay it because you've illegally used somebody's copyrighted image. So always try to use your own if you can. If not, uh, make sure you have the copyright or if you're using a free image, credit the photographer if you can. Um, and um, try to make sure that all the images that you are using are, of course, connecting with your brand as much Correct. as possible. Sarah says, you don't want people getting a false impression of what your business does or what you're offering um, by showing pictures of another premises or something maybe that you don't you don't offer or that's portraying a treatment done in a different way, then people might question it. So it's all about being real and being authentic, isn't it? So yes. with your branding, the images, the colors that you use, they all want to work together to create an all-encompassing experience for your clients, whether they're seeing you in person or whether they're seeing you digitally. So absolutely wonderful well that's been super helpful um i'll see if there's any more questions we've got a lot of uh, love for you in here as well though um christine says amazing thanks to you both kerry says sarah is the best um there's <laughs> loads of loads of people watching with us thank so thank you. you all for coming and hanging out i have to say I have learned some things from you today. So I really, really appreciate your time. Um, I'm, I'm, I know we've just upgraded to Canva Pro, so I'm gonna go and Yay. have a look myself now and just try and get some my head around some of the different bits and pieces in there. And of yes. course, um, just to sort of touch on this as well, if you are somebody who already has a branding process in place, if you've gone to a professional um, branding consultant and they've created your logos and your colorways for you, um, of course you can continue to use them uh, yes. because there's fabulous branding people out there. Um, but what Canva um, allows you to do is to kind of replicate just your own little versions of that if you wanna have that added to your social media tiles and stuff so you're not constantly having all of this work done because you know there are certain parts that you can do yourself um but if it comes to something that's like super involved like you know a price list or something like that or some big posters that you're going to have printed and you know adorning the walls of your salon then you know sometimes consider using a professional for that because they do need to be aligned just right don't they to make yes. sure that you're holding your brand and all of your your print work as well so so massive, massive thank you uh, to Sarah for joining us here today. I think that's been massively helpful for people. Um, and um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Sarah. Please reach out to Sarah at Digital Bloom if you've got any inquiries, if she can help you with your branding, if you're looking to rebrand, uh, if you've got any questions, I know she'll be happy to answer them as well as she can. 
Um, and I know that Sarah is also going to be featured in the timely 12 days of Christmas, aren't you, Sarah? Yes. So is that Friday, I think? Um, yeah, I think so. Got me stumped there. Yes, yes. it's Friday. Excellent. So Timely have very, very generously, very kindly acquired a number of little goodies from industry suppliers across the globe, which they're doing live giveaways every single day uh, for the 12 days of Christmas. Today, you'll find Salonology goodies. Um, so all you need to do is go to their Instagram page, follow um, Timely Appointment Booking Software, and they will um, tell you exactly what you need to do in order to be in it to win it. And you can win one of our boot camps and you'll be able to potentially win a prize from Sarah on Friday as well. And there's lots more going on within their 12 day giveaways as well. So don't forget to follow them and follow the instructions and you might win something fabulous. So again, Sarah, massive thank you to you. Um, and thank you from our community for being there. I know this has been a really, really big question for everybody. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us. And we'll Thank see you, you again soon.